Hello, 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 ladies, and a happy, happy, happy Monday. I hope that you are well. I hope that your last week was pretty good. I'm hoping that your week coming ahead is going to be fabulous the same way that I hope mine is going to be. Happy February. I am very shocked that it's February already. I felt like at the end of last year, I was ready for 2016 to be over with and to jump into this new year in 2017. And I feel like January just flew by. And I'm also feeling like February is going to fly by because February is a very short month. These videos are recorded over the weekend just in case you are a new subscriber or if you're not a new subscriber and you're just jumping back in here in 2017. I am currently recording my videos over the weekend, so usually on a Friday or a Saturday, and then I post them on Monday. Uh, so the Super Bowl would already be over, but I am hoping that my team won and I am team Atlanta Falcons so hopefully me and my husband are huge Giants fans but you know they were out we went to see them in the beginning of January but I lived in Atlanta for four years and during my time living in Atlanta they are the ones that introduced me to football it was never something I was interested in at all ever um, but when I moved there I realized that that was the thing football was big you started your kid in football at like four years old so I'm definitely rooting for the Falcons hopefully they have won all right so before I jump into this video I'm gonna do a couple of little like channel updates which I try to do before I start any specific topics so everybody knows what's going on one, I am back actively on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram in the past, then you know that I have been gone off of Instagram since about September. I didn't notice that it had been that long until just the other day when I decided that I was going to jump back in it on February 1st. So I am back actively on Instagram. So if you want to see what I'm doing throughout the week or when I post things, I'm currently doing the February Instagram daily challenge where I post a different photo based off of the challenge. I'll try to post like a picture somewhere after this clip or something of what I'm doing. Um, but my Instagram is bun in the oven 86. So all you have to do is request me because it is a private page and I will add you and we can interact and do all sorts of things. So I did want to update you on that. Other thing I did another baby buy um, and so baby buys are a big deal because I've done a lot of baby buys over the course of my TTC journey. I think that um, it's never too early to be prepared for something in your future. I am aware that some people believe that it could be bad luck or some sort of foolishness, but I don't. So I still collect my baby buys and so I did a few of those this past week that I would like to share with you. And then I also realized that there's something that I collect in reference to children that I've never shared here. And so I want to share that as well so that you can see what's happening. But we'll go with the baby box from this week. So now, if you've been following for a long time, you know in the beginning I only purchased unisex items. Items that could be used more neutral, boy and girl. And then after a while I decided, hey, I'm just going to get boy clothes and I'm going to get girl clothes because I do have a desire to have a much bigger family and because of that I will eventually need both boy and girl clothes so there's no need to skim on those things. So now when I go to the store I try to pick up one girl outfit and then also one boy item and that's what happened this time. Took a little trip to Babies Are Russ and I picked up three items. It came to $17.48 which I thought was a steal so I will show you. I picked up two boy onesies. And so here is the first one, which I think is super cute. It has more of a holiday theme. It's in size zero to three months. I've actually now started searching um, for sizes based off of where I will predict myself to be in pregnancy in the future. And so at this rate, I am thinking that we will have a winter baby for sure somewhere between December of 2017 and February of 2018. Fingers and toes crossed, ladies. Keep your prayers. I need all the prayers I can get. I love when people comment and tell me they're praying for me. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. And so that's why this little outfit I think will be good for that time. And it has like a little 
reindeer on the feet which I think are a super cute zero to three boy outfit uh, and it was $2.99 and then I picked up one more and that was this one and it says Mr. Handsome on there which I thought was cute but like a little penguin and nothing on the feet but it is covered in the feet there and they are both zero to three months and they were both $2.99 each and so the other thing that I absolutely love, and I was hoping that I could get a boy version of this, but I could not find it, was this winter outfit for a girl. I saw it and thought, oh, this is so cute. Wish they had it in zero to three months, but they didn't. They only had it in three to six, so I picked it up anyway. And it's this really nice red. It comes up much brighter in the camera because of the lights in the bathroom. But it's a really nice deep red. I love all the embroidered hearts and the buttons. And then it has two zippers that go all the way down to the feet. A little place to cover up little hands. And of course, you know I love anything with little ears. So that's it for my baby buys from this particular week. I have made a decision, by the way, um, in regards to a big baby buy haul. So I was asked if I at some point would share all of the baby clothes that I've collected over the course of my TTC journey. And so what I've decided is that once I'm pregnant, I'm guessing within my first trimester, that I will share a video on everything that I've purchased over time. I think I'm gonna break it up into like four different videos and go based off a of size, the size of the items because I just have that much stuff. And so that's the decision. So anyone who was waiting to find out if I was gonna share like every single item that I've ever purchased in life in terms of baby, I do plan on doing that later on in the year. Lastly, before I get into the topic of discussion of this video, are these DVDs. So a while back, I was a counselor, excuse me, <coughs> and actually for several years, a camp counselor. And I was specifically a camp counselor at a Christian day camp. And at that time, I was introduced to Veggie Tales, of which I absolutely fell in love with once I um, found out about them for myself in general. And then I started to think about them in terms of my children. And so I've actually been collecting Veggie Tales DVDs and kind of like Veggie Tales books. And I thought, hey, I've never shared that with you guys. And so here are two. Over the holiday season, my husband had picked them up as like a little surprise for me and then I watch them and I hold them for our little children. Uh, so this one, it says a double feature, Noah's Ark, Esther, and then also Esther the girl who became queen and it's called Lessons in Courage and Trusting God, which I just, I love the way that they talk to children and get them to understand things that adults would have a harder time explaining or that they would understand. I, it's just the way that they do it is good and it's not always Christian based. It's usually things that help you in life. And so this one is called Minnesota Kook and the Search for Samson's Hairbrush. And it's called A Lesson in Dealing with Bullies. And so I have quite a few of these little DVDs and you can order them online or you can like get them from your local Christian bookstore. But uh, yeah, something that I wanted to share. So now, on to me and my life and what's going on with me. And by the way, I am definitely working on another day of posting. I am thinking that that other day of posting is going to be a Wednesday. I do actually need your help in regards to that on specific topics that you would like for me to discuss. So if you can take a moment while watching this video and comment below and let me know any specific topic that you would like for me to discuss, I definitely would appreciate that. If you don't leave a topic, then you probably won't ever see a Wednesday video. I'll just be totally honest with that because I kind of need your feedback so that I know what to post. What I'm looking to do is keep the Monday videos and the Monday videos are really more about me and my personal TTC journey. And so um, I'm not sure that it helps in learning anything specific about TTCing, just hearing my particular story. And so there's a lot of things that I know and I feel like a lot of things that I can help with, but there's also a tremendous amount of videos that I've already made. And so one day out the week, I would like to do a more informative, helpful teaching kind of video. And so if you have any ideas, please comment below and let me know in reference to the TTC category. So last time we spoke, 
or I should say within the last three videos of 2017, I spoke about going to the doctor. And so there are a couple of things that are coming up now. Uh, one, my procedure, I'm not gonna say surgery because my husband gets freaked out when I say surgery. So um, my hysteroscopy procedure is less than a month away. Could you imagine that? It is less than a month away. I was looking at the calendar like, this is coming right around the corner, time is flying by. So that's less than a month away. Uh, my next appointment is in the next two weeks. I am also waiting for AF to arrive and she should show up within the next week and a half to two weeks. And just in case you're not sure what, sure what AF is, it just means aunt flow, your period or whatever other term that you may use for it. And so I am waiting for that to happen. What's gonna happen in two weeks once AF does arrive is I will be starting birth control. And so I know that it's very interesting for people. How do you start birth control? Are you supposed to be having a baby? There's a lot of different nuances when it comes to these things. Um, but the moral of the story is I'm starting birth control before my actual procedure so that we can ensure that I'm not pregnant before time. If you look over a hysteroscopy, then you will see that that's pr a pretty common thing for doctors to do. Um, and the only other time that you really take birth control while TTCing is if your doctor wants you to regulate your period or if you are going to do IVF. And so in this particular situation, it's because my hysteroscopy is less than a month away and AF will be showing in two weeks. So I'll be on birth control for just about two weeks um, before my procedure. And then I have another follow-up appointment four weeks after that. So I'll be on it for quite a while, but I just wanted to throw that in there. I'll be starting birth control in the next two weeks. I did get back some test results from the doctor's office, even though I have not met with a doctor because I think I've explained to you guys that we have a portal. And so whenever the test results come in, they automatically email me. The one set of test results that I haven't received back yet though is the karyotyping test, which is like the big one that we're all waiting for to see about um, our chromosomes and how they link together, if mines are good, if his are good, and all sorts of things. And so I'm hoping that time flies in reference to that because I've definitely been checking my calendar, trying to figure out how many weeks have gone by before I've gotten the results. They say between four and six weeks, but I'm hoping that it's gonna be before that time. And reference to the results that we did get back, uh, one was about my thyroid. We tested my thyroid again, even though we did test it a couple of years back and it was normal. And my thyroid came back perfectly fine. So for all of you who have asked if I've ever had my thyroid checked and all sorts of other questions in regards to it, my thyroid is fine, nothing is wrong there. And so that's another thing to kind of check off the list. Number two, the second thing that we had tested was for diabetes. And I explained in my last video, the reason for doing the test was because my doctor wanted to know if I had a history of diabetes in my family, of which I explained that I actually did. And um, I also started talking to her about a procedure that I had done on my breast a few years ago. And when the surgeon was finished, she found it interesting that the mass that was removed from my breast resembled something that a diabetic would have, even though I actually did not have diabetes. And so that was the reason for this whole testing to see about me potentially having diabetes. Well, so here come the results of the very uh, shocking <laughs> test. I came back as a pre-diabetic. And so there are three stages in terms of the diabetes test. One is your test can come back normal and your blood levels are in a normal range. Two of your tests could fall into a secondary range, which puts you in the status of being a pre-diabetic. And then three, you could just be a full-blown diabetic. And so in reference to be a pre-diabetic and a, just a regular diabetic, I have read that it's definitely something that is hereditary. And my doctor had also said something about that, which was the reason why we were testing for it, but I will admit to you that I was actually shocked and flawed because I did not think that I fit into the pre-diabetic phase. So my blood isn't quite normal in reference to diabetes, but it also wasn't full-blown diabetic. Um, so it really is a warning sign to me that there is an ability for me to have diabetes later on in life, which obviously is something that I do not want because I have plenty of family members that have it and I kind of know what the experience is and the medicine and all sorts of things. Um, but it's, I'm happy that we looked into it because it wouldn't have been something that I would have looked into on my own. 
not being prompted. Um, but I will say that it did make for a very significant lifestyle change in my life. One of the things that I will say is that I have always been the one that was um, talked about being interested in fitness and losing weight and stuff like that. And so I know that you may look at me and think, girl, you need to lose no weight. But everyone has their own things. When you're in the bathroom by yourself naked, you have your own opinions on what you like to do. And based off of what the scale says versus what you look like to other people is two totally different things. Because I'm quite sure I look a weight that I definitely am not to you guys. I probably look much slimmer than I am. Um, but I've always talked about wanting to be more focus in terms of fitness, but not necessarily being motivated enough to do so. Like I'm the type of person that if I go to the gym, I need to be going to a class because if I'm not going to a class and I am just not doing anything at the gym, I just can't get on the treadmill and walk for 15 minutes or, you know, come up with my own kind of regimen and things like that. I've spoken about this in the past. Um, but in embarking on this year, I thought, I want to be in a place where I was already working out prior to getting pregnant because I want to be healthier for the baby and I also want to be able to continue to walk on a daily basis and to continue to, you know, use a treadmill or, or do whatever preliminary exercises that I was doing prior to that time. Because, you know, if you become pregnant and you are actively working out, then they suggest that you can continue to do that. But if you were never working out prior to becoming pregnant, then they absolutely do not suggest that. And so I wanted to be, you know, the one that was working out before time so I'm a little bit more healthy and being able to continue that throughout pregnancy. But anyway, back to the results of this test. I always say that one of the biggest things in life is kind of like being true to yourself. Even if you don't feel like you're being true to everybody else in regards to yourself, the biggest thing is to be true to yourself and not to lie to yourself. So you may put on a phase and all the rest of the stuff for other people, but if you're really like believing some of the stuff that you're telling other people, then you gotta take it back just a little bit. And reference to me, I've always said that I've been very under motivated when it comes to fitness, although it's something that I would like. I've never been one to make New Year's resolutions like, yeah girl, I'm gonna work this out and I'm be in the gym 24 seven because I know that that's not me. But getting the test results as being a pre-diabetic really put fire under my butt. Fire like no other. Motivation like no other. I saw the results and that test pop up on the computer and I was like, oh no, oh not me in Jesus name, okay? I'm drinking water, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. And these are things that had it not been for that, then that wouldn't have been something that I would have done, you know, but I was always true to myself and the fact that uh, I'm not really, mm, not really into it like that. But this, this has. So in this short span of time, I've actually started working out, going to the gym. I actually have a gym in my apartment complex. And so I'm going to the gym now three times a week. And then I'm also having more of an intake of water, more water and trying to lower my intake of soda because I do drink quite a bit of soda as so I'm trying to lower my intake of soda. And so that's been the newest thing. Going to the gym three times a week without actually taking a class has been really interesting. I do have two apps or there's three on my phone that I use that I can share with you if you're interested in that. And um, then also a YouTube channel that I'm using that I've been subscribed to for forever that I finally decided to use. And then also just walking around, like doing a few laps in my complex because it's a very big complex. Um, but that, it's crazy how things can motivate you and how before I wasn't really interested and there really wasn't anything to really get me to get up off the couch and go and do, you know, the things that I desired. Getting the test result that said that I could potentially be diabetic in the future was like absolutely not. I do not have time for that. In the future, I'm gonna be running around, having a good time with my kids, helping them in life, going to the park, playing, all sorts of stuff. I don't, I don't have time for this. And so I've definitely made a significant life change. And so that has been one of the most interesting things of the week. So if you have something that is hereditary in your family and you think that it's something that you don't have or, um, 
maybe that you think that you don't have, you probably should go get tested for it just to see, just so you know, so that maybe you can be in the position to help yourself not be in their position in the future. And so I just wanted to throw that in there, but thyroid is fine um, in a pre-diabetic phase of life, but working on it all the same. Well, ladies, I hope that you are having a good week. Uh, next week, of course, I will be back on the Monday. Don't forget to let me know uh, any of your ideas or your thoughts for a video on Wednesday. As always, be sure to comment. I do write back all to, to all of the comments that I receive. Some of you, though, I realize that I can like the comment, but I can't actually write you back and I'm not really sure why that is. I guess maybe it's like some settings where you, where you don't accept comments from people even though you comment. So I don't know but I do respond to everybody that pretty much leaves me a comment unless it's like way ratchet because you know I'm not doing that. But anyway I hope you're having a good week. I'm sending loads and loads and loads and loads of baby dust your way and I will see you soon.